Hi everybody, it's Delusion Dispeller. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is there. Um, it's morning here. It's actually like almost 9.30. And I wanted to do a video talking about some traits of narcissism that are not the typical DSM traits that you read about or maybe even know about. Um, I shared these actually on <coughs> Bella Koska's channel. But I want to share them again here because I want them to be in public so that if you see these in people, you will know that this is narcissistic. I will give you the traits and then I'll give you the example um, of that type of trait being played out. So one of the traits of narcissism, besides the obvious things like the entitlement, the grandiose, um, they call it delusions of grandeur or grandiose, grandiosity. I'm not sure how you say it. <coughs> Excuse me. My voice isn't quite woken up yet. Um, and I got a lot to do today. So I wanted to get this video done and um, out there. Anyways, besides the entitlement, the grandiosity, the lack of empathy, those are the three biggies with a narcissist. <coughs> there is this need to constantly appear to be busy. And I see this a lot in women. <coughs> I don't know about men, but I know that in women, it's a very common one. They will talk about how they have this, this, and this to do, and then they have to go over here, and they're always busy, and they're always working, <coughs> that sort of thing. Let me get some water. I'll be back. <coughs> Goodness. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, so they always got to look like they're busy doing something. Um, a lot of people that are in, like, show business will use humanitarian causes. Sometimes they really are busy and they're doing things, but with a narcissist, they will appear to be busy, even if they're not. They could be home sitting on their booties and then be on the phone talking to somebody and say, oh yeah, I just got done shopping. And then, you know, we went and helped this woman move out of her house and I had to go take the car in to get it fixed and had to go get my nails done and yeah, so they do that kind of thing, to look busy, to look like they're so much in need by other people. People just pull on them all the time. In fact, you'll hear them say that. People just drain me. They just pull on me all the time. They always want something from me, you know, and it's in their head. It's not legit. It's just in their head. All right, another thing about a narcissist, <coughs> they need to be seen as unique, like above everybody, better than everybody, different than everybody. One thing you do not want to do to a narcissist, I mean, if you want to anger them and get their rage all over you, this is what you're going to do. These glasses seriously need to be fixed. They're all crooked, thanks to the cat. She likes to nuzzle up against them and make them crooked. All right. One thing that a narcissist, <clears throat> you don't want to do to a narcissist unless you want to be on the other end of their narcissistic explosion of wrath is you do, do not ever want to tell the narcissist they remind you of somebody. Don't say, oh, well, you look like so-and-so or you remind me of this person or, oh, my gosh, <coughs> you sounded just like so-and-so. They hate being compared to other people, unless it's somebody that they see as having arrived or having something they want, successful, um, famous, people adore this person, then, oh, of course, by all means, compare them to them. And you'll usually get a response like, oh, no, me? You really think so? Oh, my gosh. Haha, <laughs> that's funny. I just never saw it before. But if you're just comparing them like to somebody you saw, I don't know, on the news, oh, I'm nothing like that. How could you say that? I don't do that. I don't act like that. I don't look anything like that. Yeah, they, they hate it unless it's somebody that they see as successful and famous. Um, a narcissist needs to only be associating with high and mighty people such as themselves. They will surround themselves with the popular people of the day, or if it's online, the people that are, you know, big on the scene of whatever the topic is. We'll, we'll just make up a topic. Say it's a person that's talking about, let me think, because narcissists are picky about the topics they talk about. Okay, a financial topic, okay? And a narcissist finds out somebody has a seminar in town. 
they will automatically tell you that they know this person, that they're like best friends with them, or they're somehow connected to them, they're related to their cousin, or I don't know, whatever, anything to be seen like they are, you know, up there in this echelon with this person that they deem as like really popular in the public and high and mighty and successful. Um, like Wayne Dyer, for instance, everybody knows him. He's kind of a new age guru type person. Um, he does a lot of interesting books and teachings and stuff. Wayne Dyer's, I, I don't know if he's like, the end thing right now, but for a while, everything was Wayne Dyer or Oprah Winfrey, you know, popular names. And a narcissist doesn't feel worthy in and of themselves because they're pretty nasty, mean people <laughs> deep down inside <coughs> and sometimes on the outside. So they have to associate themselves with people that other people like or admire or watch on TV or are talking about, you know, they're in the know. So they have to be, well, I'm, I know them or I met them in person. I shook their hand. Oh, we sat down to lunch the other day. Yeah. And sometimes just to impress you even more, the narcissist will put them in themselves in a place where they can judge the other person, their character. Like, oh yes, I sat down. Um, we went out to Burger King the other day and you wouldn't believe how she acted for being a famous person. She wasn't very classy. Yeah, they'll do that, basically, to make it seem like they are this person's judge and jury, and they're just that high that they can point fingers at this famous person. <coughs> and you're sitting there thinking, what? You ate lunch with Angelina Jolie, and she didn't meet your taste of person? Who are you? <laughs> you know, and who is she? You know, just legitimately, you're thinking, well, that's a famous star, and, and you, little peon over here, think you can tell me that she was the person that had this issue when I know fully well, you're the one with all the issues, you know? <clears throat> so yeah. All right. Um, narcissists feel they are entitled to do and say whatever they want to anybody without accountability. They feel that they can be as crass as they want. They can be as shocking as they want, rude as they want, and just plain flat out lie. And nobody will hold them accountable. Why? Because nobody does hold them accountable. Very few people do. Why don't people speak up to the narcissist and say, look, you're out of line. Um, I don't like how you treated that person. And if they do, it's usually a hit or run thing. The reason why is because narcissists are very powerful. They have their minions, their flying monkeys, the people that do their bidding. They have protectors and bodyguards and lawyers and people to defend them. So nobody's going to want to go up against a narcissist because they know they can't win. You rarely ever win a litigation with a narcissist. They are just too darn crafty. These are not dumb people. Narcissists are highly intelligent people, most of them that I've met. Um, and they're very, very cunning. Even if they're not intellectually smart, they're very cunning, very manipulative, and very good at manipulating. And they will make you second guess yourself in a matter of moments. That's why the best fight against a narcissist is to stay away from them. Because they do know how to read people and they do know how to manipulate people and they will manipulate and control you. I don't care how strong you think you are. I was pretty strong back in the day when I encountered some narcissists and they had me chasing my tail in a matter of moments. They are powerful people. And as much as we hate that and maybe, you know, don't like the fact that somebody has that much control and jurisdiction over our own psyche, um, they're emotional vampires. They are manipulative, psychological tormentors. And they're very good at what they do because they've studied people for years. These are not people that are just, you know, peons and, you know, panty waste. They just, they really know what they're doing and they're very good at doing it. And it's very tormenting when you are on the receiving end. So just stay out of that playground. You do not want to play there. Find a new sandbox to play in. I know I have. All right. Um, so they feel entitled to do and say whatever they want without accountability because nobody dares to hold them accountable. Nobody wants to be on the receiving end of their wrath when you do hold them accountable because they will do everything to you that they can to punish you. They delight in watching you squirm. They are very, there's a fine line between narcissism and psychopathology. Very many narcissists are psychopaths, but not all psychopaths are, um, however it goes. All psychopaths are narcissists, but not all narcissists are psychopaths. That's what it is. All psychopaths are narcissistic, but not all narcissists are psychopaths. Okay, that's a hard one to understand. 
Um, psychopaths by nature are narcissistic people. They don't care about people's feelings. They feel entitled. They lack empathy, all that stuff about narcissism. But yet every narcissist is not necessarily going to go cross that line to the psychopathology, but it is a very fine line in psychopathology. So some of them do cross it. Some of them dip into it and then dip out again. We've seen that online many times in many different situations, and I've seen it in person in many situations. It's everywhere. So they think that they can say what they want and get away with it because they do. People in politics, that's another example of this. People in show business, you see people abusing people all the time and getting away with it. That's just a narcissistic trait. Telling you that um, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to let you try this one more time. We're going to go here one last time. I'm going to let you have one minute of my time. They are godlike creatures in their own mind and in sometimes other people's minds. They're basically doing you a favor by allowing you an audience with them, especially if you have an audience of one. If you go one-on-one -on -one with a narcissist and they're in the um, idealization phase of you, they think you consider yourself fortunate because not everybody gets this chance to be that close to me. I don't trust people. So if I am talking to you right now, consider yourself really blessed and fortunate. That's another narcissistic trait. Um, so the godlike attitude about oneself, the, the perception that one is like a god and that everybody wants to be close to them and near them and get a piece of them and whatever. And they really believe this. They really sincerely believe this. Um, they will things say things like, I was so good to you. I did this for you. I did that for you. I was there for you. I was there when nobody was there for you. Look at who was there for you. Look at who was the person that took you under their wing. It was me. It was me. And they'll tell you that in words. They toot their own horn. They will tell on themselves in good ways and in bad ways. When they do the whole I was nice to you thing, they're letting you know that they're portraying themselves as the savior, the rescuer, and you should admire them for that and you should be grateful to them for that. If it wasn't for me, where would you be? If it wasn't for me, who would you be? You know, what would you be for that matter? Because they objectify you. You're an object to them. So you'd be nothing without them, basically. Um, They will often say, let me tell you what a great person I am. Let me tell you how I did this for this person. Sit down and let me tell you this time that I really helped that person. People that are great. And that are good to other people don't need to tell you that. You'll see that by their example. I'm not saying it's not okay to say, you know, oh, I helped this person. I did this. I gave to that charity. I don't have an issue with that. But I'm talking about people who just have this nuance about them that they have to brag about themselves. And you sense that they're doing it because it's flamboyant. It's not, oh, well, yeah, I gave this charity or we raised this much money, blah, blah, blah. It's let me tell you what a wonderful human being I am. Let me tell you how I used my money to help this cause. Let me tell you how I went over here and I spoke about this topic. They have a need to just woohoo. Um, what's that called? Not showcase. Grandstand themselves. Um, if you are a decent person, people are going to know it. They're just going to know because they get to know you as a person. You don't need to let people know. Um, narcissists will shut down other people that question and oppose them by demeaning them. That was rude. That was the stupidest question I ever heard. Any smart person would know better than to say that. Any dummy could have done that. You know, that kind of thing. Just demeaning, rude statements. And it, it serves no purpose other than to elevate the person that feels lower than a rattlesnake because they want you to be down there with them. They don't know how to climb back up to the top in a decent, moralistic, wholesome way. So they have to do it in a manipulative, snaky, shady way. And that's just how the narcissist's mind works. Um, they will say things like, I don't do that. I'm not like that. I would never. That is a narcissistic statement a lot of times. And it's basically saying, nah, nah, I'm better than you. I would never do that. It's childish. It's juvenile. If you notice one thing about narcissistic traits and characteristics and tactics, 
it's the trait of like a seven-year-old or maybe a 12-year-old. They never grew up. They're stunted in that childlike or childish state of mind where they're still say, my daddy's bigger than your daddy. Oh, you don't know them, but I do. Or you can't be friends with them because I don't like them. That's all childish gibberish. That belongs out on the eight-year-old playground, not on YouTube, not in life, not in adult conversations, but it's everywhere. Like I said, online, offline, narcissists are all over the place, and they're usually in upper positions. They're your boss. They're the music teacher at the school that your kid can't figure out why they seem to target them all the time and pick on them. They are the president of an agency. They're a CEO of a company because they're the big wigs. They get up to the top because they're brilliant people most of the time. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. Because there can be covert narcissists, overt narcissists, somatic narcissists, intellectual narcissists. There, there's all kinds of them. It just depends where you are and what the situation is. But they basically all have the same kind of tactics in different ways that they use. <coughs> um, if somebody says, well, you don't matter to me. You aren't as good as this person. Or I don't really need you. Um, you uh, you're a panty wipe. You're a this. You're a that. You're nothing. You're the little person. You're my peeps. I used to have a narcissist in my life that used to call people her peeps. Listen up, peeps. We're not little chicks, and you are not the mama hen rooster person or whatever. But that was how she talked to people, and it's just how it is. They demean people. They see them as less than them. They're either taught that by a narcissistic parent when they are the peep, or maybe they're the golden child, and they say, well, see all those people out there? Dear heart, they're nothing like us. Um, have you ever seen The White Oleander? If you haven't seen that movie, you need to go watch that movie. That mother was narcissistic. And she was treating her daughter like the golden child. Thankfully, in the movie, the daughter realizes what was going on and realizes the mother always tried to live through her. And she takes back her power through the movie. It's an excellent movie. There's so many good movies on narcissism that just really spell it out. And I like the ones where the person in the end wins, you know, the one that was the victim whether it's victim of being golden child or victim of being the persecuted lost child or scapegoat. Um, they will accuse you of stuff that they're doing, the projection. Now that, you probably know, that's a typical narcissistic technique and trait. Um, though in my case, the one person said, I didn't have patience with people. Um, Laura, you always bring people close to you and then cast them aside when they get too close. You resent them. You reject them. You talk bad about them. I wasn't doing any of those things, but this person was. So they projected their issues onto me. And then when I confronted them and said, nope, that's not me. That's you. What, what are you talking about? Look how I did this, this, and this. If I was like that, would I have done this? I mean, that's what they do. They reason. They cannot. They're allergic to blame and responsibility. They cannot take responsibility. All right. Um, they will use terms to kind of keep you as their little um, groupies. Like they'll call you Chica. That was one thing that this person used to do. Chica. Oh, hi, Chica. Hi, girly. You know, they'll make you feel like you're their most important favorite friend in the world. But, oh, watch it. When you are on the receiving end of the other, when it flips the other way, they can become as vicious to you as you saw them be vicious to the other people that they were not their Chica. When you stop being Chica, you become target and scapegoat and person to um, attack. And to turn other people against and smear in front of other people. So you don't want to be on the receiving end of that. The best way to handle a narcissist is not to handle them. Do not get involved with one. If you sense that you're with one, walk the other way. Get out of Dodge. I should have done it a lot sooner several times in my life. Um, most recently, I should have done it a lot sooner than I did, and I didn't. I don't know. I'm curious, and I like... Um, I like a little bit of drama. If it's fun drama, 
not meanness and cruelty to people. I don't like that. But I do like drama if it's something where there's interesting things going on. Like the Chris Watts thing, <coughs> that was interesting to me because I really didn't even know. At the time I got involved in it, I thought we were going to find out that Shanann had popped up somewhere, that she had gone to a friend's house, that maybe, you know, it was a big misunderstanding. I, honest to God, as God is my witness, I did not know it was going to end up like it did. Because had I, I would have bowed out a lot sooner. I don't like murder cases. I don't even watch, like, CSI on TV. I don't like um, cop shows. I don't like <coughs> graphic shows. I used to watch House, and then I turned the channel as soon as it started getting graphic. So you can imagine, I didn't watch many full episodes of that show. Which, by the way, in interestingly, and I was going to actually do a video on this, and I might still. House, in my opinion, and actually in a lot of people's opinions, um, Dr. House was a narcissist. And yet, look at how brilliant he was. He did surgery on people. He told people how to handle certain situations, and they would work out. Sometimes they didn't. But that's how it is being a doctor anyway. You can't guarantee somebody's going to live or die, you know. Do the best you can. But he was definitely narcissistic in how he looked at people. And I am going to do some research into the show and see if I can excerpt some of the things he said that were narcissistic. Because um, maybe you know somebody else that kind of talks like that. And you can point out the narcissism to yourself, you know, in that person and realize that's what you're dealing with. And maybe get away before it's too late. All right. Anyway, that was just a few other things I wanted to point out to you that are not always talked about on the typical narcissism channels or in books or whatever. And just in case you hadn't heard it, I wanted you to hear it and know what to look for in narcissists. Anyway, I want to welcome a few new people right now. Um, I'm not doing a specific video on this because there's just a few of them right now. Um, as of yesterday, I believe Lawrence, Jane, Kelly, and Teresa. And any of the ones that I have not mentioned, I have not seen them in my email. So I don't know if they didn't pop up in there or what. These are ones that pop up in my email. Anyways, Lawrence, Jane, Kelly, and Teresa, thank you for coming to my channel and subscribing. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm really glad you're here. Um, I hope you have a good time. I hope you will comment and share um, in a decent, respectful way, of course. Uh, but I welcome your comments, and uh, we will have a discussion. And hopefully, more people will subscribe. They can have normal, adult, neurotypical, sound conversations. And disagree with me if you must, but be respectful. Um, also, I'm not allowing any witchcraft on the channel, so any mention of any type of witchery or um, anything that's too much into the practicum of paganism or witchcraft, I, I don't want it on my channel. It will be deleted, so I'm just letting you know that now. And any other type of um, ungodly religions, also, same thing. So, um, if you are of that, you know, affirmation or whatever, then you might not want to mention it on my channel, because this is a Bible and God-honoring channel. That's my standard, that's my boundary, and that's how it's going to be. So, if you just want to come on here and chat as a person and not mention all that other stuff, um... The other thing that I'm not going to allow is any type of perverted discussion of any um, activities <coughs> that are going on between you and another person or anybody you know or anything like that. You get my drift. You'll see as time goes on and I start seeing stuff pop up and it's gone, you'll know I deleted it, plain and simple. So just letting you know that right ahead of time, um, things are going to change and my channel is going to be cleaned up automatically. It's not going to be having that kind of stuff. I don't like crass language. I have allowed some of it because I want people to see some of the baloney that goes on behind the scenes. I've been deleting it, but I've been keeping some of it so that you can see how people talk to me. Simple as that. Um, anyway, my email address is delusiondispeller at gmail.com. You can also if you want to donate to me, paypal.com, delusiondispeller at gmail.com, again, would be where the email address was for it. Um, I also have a P.O. box. It is 1313 um, Moline, M-O-L-I-N-E, Illinois, 61266. If you want to send me something that you did as a hobby or gift me in some way, I'm cool with it. Um, I'm not trying to ask for stuff. 
But people have said over the years, oh, if only you had a P.O. box, I would send you this. If only you had a P.O. box and I had a way to get this to you, I don't want to send it to your personal address. I'm just making it available for you because you asked for it. So, um, and I do appreciate everything you give me. They're gifties. That's what I call them, gifties. And I love gifties. So, um, I make no apology of that. Oh, another thing. Somebody had said I need to apologize for when I do things wrong. I do. So, I'm not sure what you're referring to. If you're referring to a misconstrued thing that you had said, um, it's misconstrued. And I'm not going to apologize for it because that's on you, not me. And um, if I do something and I know that it's wrong, I do apologize. Enough said on that topic. All right. Anyhow, everybody have a wonderful day. Um, this has gone on for 25 minutes already. That's long enough. And people's attention spans usually only about 15, 20 minutes before they're like, ah, this is boring. I'm going to go do something else. So I respect that. Anyway, y'all have a great day today. It's a Saturday. It's really Sabbath. I shouldn't be working, but I am going to clean my house because we are allowed to do necessary work. And my house has gone un unkempt for a while. It needs to be tidied up. It's driving me crazy. All right. Love y'all. See you soon. God bless. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, like, etc. You know the drill. Share. See you then.